Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Christian Dominic Tanchico or Dominic, and welcome to our live webinar series of Ask Me Philippines. Before we begin, if any of you have any questions regarding the discussion, don't hesitate to send the send them to us by entering it in the comments section of whatever social media platform you're watching this on and i will be here to cater to them for our guest speaker so welcome to the live webinar series of sme.ph and e-learning marketplace for filipino professionals where one can develop relevant and in-demand skills through master classes in different fields of learning if you want to learn more about us feel free to visit our page at www sme.ph. For those who are watching on Facebook or YouTube, feel free to share the link to the stream to the people who you think will be interested in today's topic. This webinar is in partnership with ASEAN Youth Organization, an ASEAN-approved nonprofit organization that spreads awareness of ASEAN to over 200 million young people in Southeast Asia. This webinar is also brought to you by the Rotary and Rotary Club of Alabama Madrigal Business Park. So our topic for today is all about fair trade as sustainability option. So what is fair trade? Um, fair trade is a way to doing business based on 10 principles that are internationally recognized and accepted. It places people and the planet front and center without sacrificing profitability. It is a much needed framework for a future best set with the, with the threats of climate change, environmental degradation, and social inequality. So who will be discussing that for us today? So our guest for today is an expert presenter and speaker of climate change, sustainable development, environment, and management. He graduated from the University of the Philippines College of Law with a Juris Doctor degree. He is also a certified master project manager and fellow of the American Academy of Project Management. Right now, he is currently the Executive Director and General Manager of the Community Crafts Association of the Philippines, or CCAP. He is a recognized executive and advocate in both business and development work with extensive experience in climate change adaptation, disaster risk reduction, sustainable development, organizational development and management, sales and marketing, and strategic planning. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Sir Voltaire P. Alvarez. Thank you well, very much, Dominic. Good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning, good morning, everyone. Well, how are you, sir? Very good, um, very good. Very good. Cozy so, at home. <laughs> cozy at home. Stay here, sir. <laughs> um, okay, sir. Uh, I'm not going to delay anymore, so you can have the floor on your own and have your All talk. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Dominic. <clears throat> so, as Dominica said, I'll be sharing with you um, the topic on fair trade as a sustainability option. So, we will be exploring today what fair trade is all about and why is it important in this day and age to be an option for economic and business development. I'm, I'm very happy to be here with you all, and I believe that this is a wonderful platform for the youth to be able to understand, learn skills, and explore ideas that perhaps they haven't met. No? And so um, I always would like to remind each and every one of us that there is light in us. No? And if I may, I'd like to start with a short poem by Marianne Williamson. This was used in the movie Coach Carter, if you've seen the movie. It's on Netflix, by the way, so you can catch that there. So it starts with, it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? gorgeous, talented, and fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. 
as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So I'd like to esconce our discussion, our conversation today in, the, in that poem. No? We were born to manifest the glory that is within. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, we are also liberating others. And this is the spirit of fair trade, if you ask me. It is, it is business that allows people to develop equally and fairly. In a world that is capitalist, majority of which is capitalist, the drive for profit is very strong, even at the expense of people and their rights and their lives and their livelihoods and the planet, which we are already experiencing right now, what with the impacts of climate change and global warming. Just recently, we've had two typhoons, one after the other. This will continue to be exacerbated because of our constant need to extract from our natural resources, thereby degrading the environment that supports our very lives. And that is why the call of fair trade is important in this day and age. Many people are exploring, especially the young, they're exploring how to become business people. Many become small business owners. Many become social entrepreneurs. And these are very important directions, especially for our economy and for our country in general. But I'd like to introduce you to a concept that perhaps can help you find more meaning than just earning money for yourself and enriching yourself in the process. And that is fair trade. Before that, allow me to share who we are. I come from an organization called Community Crafts Association of the Philippines. CCAP started in 1973, and this was founded by business people, actually, executives of the major corporations in the country back then. Also, some of our founders are religious men and women who, who support communities, developing their sense of being, especially at the time when the Philippines was in the dark due to martial law. But CCAP became a focal point for many of the handicraft makers in the country, especially those who do not have a market. The goal of the founders was to help the partner handicraft makers to develop their products through product development. Because oftentimes when our partners develop baskets or make baskets, it's just one design, the same basket all over again. And so the, part, the, the founder said, no, we should bring in a professional designer, help them develop the design, and more importantly, market these designs. So as CCAP developed this strategy, we realized, our founders realized, that we cannot just handle it or manage it the way regular business does. Our founders were rooted in a very, very strong conviction that the makers, the producers, should be fairly treated, should be fairly paid, and should be given utmost respect. Oftentimes, in a capitalistic model, the producers or the workers are not given what they're due. And oftentimes, we've seen these stories over and over again unfair labor practices, union busting, and so on and so forth. And so our founders started trying to look for alternatives. And that is when we discovered what was then known as the alternative trade. Alternative trade became a, an important ally, especially in the West, in combating slave work in combating products and production made by slaves in the former British co colonies in the Caribbean and in Africa. And this soon spread throughout the world. 
And our founders found and discovered fair trade and immediately wanted to apply it in our production and management. So in the early 80s, we adopted formally fair trade and we became a guaranteed member of the World Fair Trade Organization thereafter. In 1998, in order to strengthen the business side of our operations, our board decided to incorporate a subsidiary organization, a marketing organization called CCAP Fair Trade for Development. And that is tasked precisely to do business while the NGO, which was founded in the 1970s, continue with the development program of our partners. Throughout this time, we've always been an export organization. We've always offered our products abroad. But in 2017, our board, after years of being invited by several of our partners, friends, family members in the Philippines to sell our products in the country, finally relented and launched the local brand in 2017 called Likang Atin by CCAP Factory. So this is the spectrum of over 40 years of our work, our mission, to ensure that our artisans are fairly treated, they are fairly paid, and given dignity to ensure their development. And that has been our work to provide world-class market-driven and leading fair trade products. No? Listening, learning, innovating, and connecting with partners across the world. We have 24 partner communities across the Philippines, artisan communities, skilled workers using raw materials such as rattan, abaca, nito, and many others with over a thousand artisans, majority of whom are mothers. No? So we are supporting rural development and women empowerment as well. So having said that and having shared who we are and our mission, let's now go to the fundamental question of this class. What is fair trade? And how can it be a sustainability option? Now, I'm sure many of you are thinking, as I've said, of starting a business, or making it big, becoming rich, or even richer, perhaps. Allow me now to introduce you to a concept that not only will give you riches, but also allow you to have meaning in the business that you do. And that is, of course, fair trade. So what is fair trade? Fair trade is anchored at least on these four elements, partnership, a vision, a mission, and the support. Partnership because Fairtrade believes that as a trading partnership, that as in doing business, both the owner or the capitalist and the producers or the workers need to be on a dialogue level with transparency and respect. Now, oftentimes, the business owner would lord it over, right? Would impose, would say, would almost be dictatorial. This is what I want. This is, you know, this is the salary I'm going to give you, this is, these are the benefits I'm going to give you, so on and so forth. In fair trade, we encourage business owners to be transparent, to be more communicative, more in dialogue with their partners. Why? Oftentimes we hear about successful business people who say, single-handedly developed his business or uh, on his own created this empire. But we know it's not true. Nobody on this planet can claim that on his own or on her own, he or she developed the business. 
Because we know all businesses are developed in partnership with all members of the company. No amount of inspiration, skill, or management expertise a person would have, a business owner would have, if people around him will not believe it, will not work with him to make it and to make to achieve it, no amount of that kind of skills will make a business successful. So it will always be a partnership. Unfortunately, in the mainstream business, we often overlook the contribution of the faceless, or sometimes the nameless workers of the company. The second element of fair trade is vision. What is its vision? Fair trade envisions that workers, producers, develop alongside the business owners. Therefore, it shuns abusive and exploitative practices. And because of that, its mission is to be able to change the rules and practice of conventional trade. As I have said, in mainstream business, the focus is profit, no matter what. Even at the expense of people's health, people's livelihood, people's communities, and the environment. In fair trade, as Dominica said, people and profit are important with uh, people and the planet are important with the profit. They are not secondary. They are not subjugated to the profit. And finally, because fair trade is a community, you will find support not only in your own business, but only also in the development of partnership across the world. Remember, fair trade is a worldwide movement. There are two major organizations no, in relation to fair trade, and that is the World Fair Trade Organization and the Fair Trade Federation. And these two are your support in doing business. How do we do business using fair trade? As Dominica said, we follow at least 10 principles to ensure that we do put people and planet alongside with profit. We don't subjugate them with them. We don't put them aside in order to gain profit. And the principles are, one, opportunities for disadvantaged producers. Two, transparency and accountability. Three, fair trade practices. Four, fair payment. Five, no child labor or forced labor. Six, no discrimination. There should always be gender equity. There should always be freedom of association. Seven, good working conditions. Eight, capacity building. Nine, promotion of fair trade. And 10, respect for the environment. If you look at this, this is also reminiscent of the Sustainable Development Goals. Many of these principles respond to the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. Allow me now to walk through you through it with you using also the example and the experience of CCAP. So let's start with opportunities for disadvantaged producers. Fair trade is a strategy for poverty alleviation and sustainable development. And that is why many social entrepreneurs will find it hard to really say they're social entrepreneurs if poverty alleviation and sustainable development are not front and center in their strategy. They can only be called social entrepreneurs if the impact to their business is manifested in the way people, their workers, their producers have been alleviated from poverty. 
Otherwise, they can just be called entrepreneurs, right? Now, CCAP prioritizes no? rural communities that do not have a market but have skill. So that's very important. Many of our rural artisan communities, they have very, very deep skills of making handicrafts passed on from grandmother to mother to daughter to granddaughter and so on and so forth. And yet, they do not have a market. And because of not having a market, they have been, dis they have been taken advantage of by middlemen. I'll give you an example as a recurring example I will use throughout the principles. When you go to Burakai, you will find a, a hat, no? a, a beautiful hat made out of natural fiber, natural material, you know, being sold for 100, 150 pesos. Did you know that these hats are made in a clan just across the sea, and the middleman would buy it at 30 pesos. When CCAP was introduced to this community and we counted or we computed what it really is worth based on labor cost, material, utilities, and of course their own margin, we found out that the hats should at the very least be. 65 to 70 pesos. So that's already a price that is already too low from even breaking point. In other words, palugi nilang binibenta yung product. So because of that, they will always be dependent on the middleman because they cannot be alleviated from poverty because the money that they receive is even less than what they use to make the hats. That is the point of fair trade. Second, transparency and accountability. Oftentimes, businesses is in ensconced no? in a lot of secrets. And I understand that. There are trade secrets, there are management secrets. However, there are secrets that need not be secrets. And what are they? For example, when the management proposes or imposes something that would affect people, oftentimes, the reasoning given is not so clear. That leaves a lot of people dissolution, in anxiety, so on and so forth. In fair trade, it is encouraged that dialogue and transparency would always be front and center in the trading relationship. And how does it show? For example, in the community that we work with in Aklan, we help them cost out their product. We are transparent to them that this is what you actually need to sell this to us. This is the price that you should be selling it to us, to whoever. Because by not giving them that information, you are putting them at a disadvantage. And therefore, it's no longer a fair partnership. The business owner, the middleman, would already be one-upping the producer or the worker. No? Why is it important? Well, because we believe that person has an inherent right to develop himself to something. And if you exploit that need, then we are contributing to the bigger problem of the world where people will always be under the poverty line. If you want to become a businessman, I hope you do not become a businessman or a business person on the backs of people's dreams for their own and for their own families. 
Fair trade practices, number three, it is in relation to how we deal with the marginalized, not just producers, but also workers. And that means that we ensure that payments are provided as soon as possible, that they are supported in their capacity building, and that they are treated and acknowledged through a partnership that is secure. Oftentimes, um, there are so many fly-by-night entrepreneurs no? giving them hopes but not really developing their expertise or their state of well-being. Instead, they are manipulated and abused and taken advantage of. Fair payment. Now, the example that I gave you of the hats is a clear sign that fair payment is not present. The middleman buys it at a loss on the part of the producers. That is not fair. We are not helping them develop. Their communities will remain poor because payment is not fair to them. And that is why if you want to be a fair trade entrepreneur, a fair entrepreneur, it is important to always remind yourself that as I develop, I want my partners to develop with me. Unknowingly, many of the successful businessmen have that philosophy and they look out for their partners, their suppliers. They ensure that as they grow, their suppliers also grow with them. But that doesn't happen often. Many times, um, they are taken advantage of, even brought to court no? in some instances by these big corporations. Next is no child labor. I think I will not belabor the point no? because uh, we also do not want children to be working in conditions that are not suitable for children. They should be studying and they should be playing. They should be enjoying being children. No? And no forced labor as well. I think in this day and age, it's a no-brainer. No? But you would be surprised. A lot of sweatshops, maybe not in the Philippines, but in many countries, a lot of sweatshops are present where people work in conditions that are almost slave-like. Number six, no discrimination. There will be gender equity and freedom of association. Fair trade demands that. I don't think it's going to be a question here because I know many young people are already open and, in fact, are very strong in this regard, no? that people should not be discriminated against based on gender, based on race, based on religion, and that people should be able to be free in expressing themselves no? uh, in relation to the work that they do. So I think many of the young people are, in a way, woke on this aspect. Good working conditions also, I think many young people like yourselves would advocate for that. No? Who would want to work in, a, in an unsafe environment, right? So this is something that fair trade also demands. Because unfortunately, we also know many big companies do not follow this. Sometimes they have very beautiful offices, but when you go to the factories, the conditions are less than what is ideal. Next is capacity building. And I think this also runs across the concern of many young people, and that's why this SME.ph platform is a very important platform, because we need to develop capacities. However, if you come to think of it, many of the marginalized do not have access to this. They wouldn't even know where to find capacity building. Because, first and foremost, their main occupation for the day is to look for money in order to provide food for the table of the day. 
So capacity building would be the last thing on their minds. They would much rather work and have money at the end of the day. And that is why, as fair trade entrepreneurs, it is important that while their production, their efficiency, their productivity is important, we also advocate, we also ensure that they are capacitated and updated on their skills as much as they can. Um, and that is a partnership. No, Sometimes we give it for free, sometimes in exchange of something, meaning it could be 50-50, the fee would be 50-50, or so on and so forth, right? For many big companies, I don't think it's going to be a problem, right? There's, there's, always, be, there's always be training and development um, team. Um, but that is an important key, especially with dealing with small businesses, right? Capacity building. Number nine is to promote fair trade. And that is what I'm doing when, when I was invited by this wonderful group of young people because I want to also promote this to you. Maybe this is still not clear. This is still blurred because there's so many ideas here that I'm presenting. But who knows? They might, this might lead you to something. This might make you research more and explore more how you can be a fair trade entrepreneur. And lastly, respect for the environment. This is something that I am personally involved in as I am an environmentalist and a climate action advocate. Oftentimes, businesses, and you know that, operate as if we live in an infinite world without concern for the natural resources that they extract to develop the products that they use. Over the last century, we have seen that wanton destruction of the environment, and we are experiencing right now that one. And that's why I'm happy that many companies are already you know, opening themselves up through sustainability reporting, through CSRs, and many like that. But at the end of the day, it is still important that when we do business, we ensure that the environment, if not destroyed or at least affected, that it will be able to sustain itself through a fair process of harvest and uh, replanting. And that is what we always do at CCAP because our raw materials are natural fiber. Um, abaca, nito, and many others. No? And we ensure that they are sustainably sourced and sustainably managed. Why is that important? Well, you are young. I am still quite young. I'm only 41. I have a seven-year-old child. You will soon have your own children, I'm sure. You would want that when they become adults, they would have a planet much better than the planet that we have. They would have a Philippines that is much cleaner, much ecologically healthier than what we have right now. We would want that they have a Philippines that is ready and prepared for natural hazards that come our way as they are always coming our way because of our geographic situation. So we want that as a legacy for our children. And that is why it is important that if you want to start a business, you want to be an entrepreneur, you ensure that your children do not suffer the ill effects of your own venture. So to sum it up, why is fair trade a sustainable sustainability option? Let's look at the definition first of sustainability according to the Brundtland Commission of the United Nations. It says that sustainability is a meeting of the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And how does that address, or how is fair trade addressing sustainability? Where? With fair trade, there is fair development. It means that businesses will be sustainable if all the value chain, 
all parts of the value chain, especially the farmers, the workers, the producers, also develop fairly. Many of the great upheavals in history against um, governments and against tyrants are because people cannot stand anymore the injustice that they're experiencing. In this day and age, we cannot also afford to develop, to become rich in the face of abject poverty, especially those that are working for us, right? It cannot be sustained. Why? Sooner or later, they will leave you. Sooner or later, they will look for greener pastures. Sooner or later, they will not respect your business. And that will lead to pilferage. That will lead to theft. That will lead to many criminal activities that you wouldn't want in your business. Second, fair dialogue. Business. Businesses can only gain if dialogue is open, frank, and transparent. And many of the big businesses, multinationals, are learning this. That's why they already have these uh, corporate retreats. They have these uh, feedback mechanisms. No? Because dialogue is key. Small businesses, not much. It's always uh, very fast. No? But still, we find that in dialogue, businesses thrive, businesses develop, because the workers, the producers can also provide a perspective that perhaps the business owner will not have. And that is critical in sustainability. Just like in a relationship, no? a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship or a married relationship, if there's no dialogue, you cannot sustain that relationship. So is business. Third, it, there is fair environmental action. Most businesses get their raw materials from nature, no? and hence the protection of, say, of the same should make good business sense. You cannot sustain a business if you do not sustain the environment. This pandemic is already an example. Because of wanton exploitation of wildlife, according to the reports, the pandemic started in a wet market in China. Assuming it is indeed the, the source, we have seen this over and over again. If we do not stop that wanton exploitation, pandemics, natural disasters, plagues will always occur. And if that always happens, we cannot sustain ourselves and our livelihoods. How many businesses have closed because of the pandemic? How many livelihoods have been affected because of this pandemic? Millions, if not billions, of pesos wasted or lost because of the pandemic. So it is critical that to be sustainable, the environment should be managed properly, protected, and conserved. And fair trade provides that. Finally, fair support. One can only be sustainable if you have a good support system. And fair trade provides that. You, only, you not only become a support system within your own circle of people and suppliers, you also become part of a global community of advocates ready to support you in your business, in your marketing, in your product development, so on and so forth. We have over seven major buyers across the world, uh, many of which are in the US uh, and in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, in the in Europe as well, and these buyers don't just come in and say we want we want this we want that we want this no no, they are very far from the usual uh, business partnership. They always ask what can we do next? What can our partners do next? Do we need to send you a designer to help you design products that are effective in their own market? This is the kind of support that you get when you become a featured entrepreneur. 
according to Olive, Olivier Oliver Disrutter, one of the fair trade um, advocates, the movement has set a model that others should, shake, should, should seek inspiration from. There's inclusive economic growth, there's sustainable livelihoods, there's food security, decent work, and gender equality. No? It's critical. And all of these, although are still visions to many, for us, we're already living this out. We have inclusive economic growth. Many of our partners have grown with us through the years. No? We have, our oldest partner has been with us since 1975. And she is already almost 90 years old. And she and her family have grown with us. Sustainable livelihoods. No? The, the, the mark of fair trade has always been long-term partnerships. And it's long-term because it is based on something that allows everyone to grow, including the environment where we get our raw materials. No? That becomes sustainable. Food security because at a time where people would not have sources of food, many fair trade organizations through the business that they're operating are able to provide these material needs. Now, how do we become fair trade? Well, for one, in your business plan, in the model that you want to create, whether it's a coffee shop, a bookstore, uh, a design firm, or a marketing firm, you have to ask first, how do I become fair? How do I become fair? You can also start by looking at the 10 principles that is widely accepted by many fair trade certification bodies through the fair trade charter which was released uh, in 2019. Then, if you think you're, you have been able to implement many important aspects to that uh, principles, to those principles, you may be certified, you know. If you are an organization or a small business owner, you can be certified by the Fair Trade, World Fair Trade Organization, this one in the middle. If you are food, meaning you have chocolate uh, products or honey or coffee, you can be fair trade certified by the Fair Trade Federation, this one. And um, this is Fair Trade USA, usually also food. And this is also another fair trade label, label also in relation to food and coffee. No? So there are many, many certification bodies. Now, why is that important? Many major companies right now uh, require a certification of some sort, um, ISO certification, um, what else? Um, and fair trade is becoming one of those marks that they are looking, fair trade certification. Once you are certified, you are given a, a mark. No, for World Fair Trade, you will be given this. For Fair Trade Federation, you'll be given this. For Fair Trade USA, you will given you'll be given this. In fact, if you go to Marks and Spencer or even Starbucks and you look at some of their products, you will find in them this logo. That means that product was produced in a fair manner respecting people, respecting the planet, respecting the communities, ensuring that they develop with them. At the end of the day, the march to progress and wealth cannot be stopped. That has always been the story of our species, the human species. What can be stopped though is the exploitation the exploitation that we do to each other and to the planet that we live in. And we are at a point where we, own, we don't just need it, but we need it badly for our survival. I hope that as you grow 
as you plan, as you develop your own businesses, you keep that in mind. We need businesses right now that ensure a future better than what we have right now. We want businesses to pursue a business model that ensures that people develop with them, that people become successful with them. And finally, we hope that you, on your own, if you're not yet a business person, um, look for products that have those marks, at the very least, to support these communities. Be fair trade consumers. Thank you and good morning. So thank you very much, Sir Walter, for that wonderful talk about fair trade as a sustainability option. Uh, actually, I'm a, I'm a business student myself, and learn. I've been taking out notes actually, and it's quite an honor to learn more about such options that it can help for our uh, future businesses that I might be able to make. Um, so. I would like to invite everyone to, uh, once again, uh, if you have any questions for our speaker for today, please don't hesitate to drop them down in the comments section down below of whatever platform you're watching this on. So actually, before we uh, while the people are um, writing down their comments or their questions, I believe Sir Voltaire has prepared a short video for us. So can we play it? So yeah, so that's a video about um, CCAP, correct, sir? Yes, CCAP and CCAP Fair Trade. As I said, we are two organizations, uh, the NGO and the business. No? So I think we are only one in the Philippines that I know of. Maybe I'm wrong, but that it's the NGO that owns a business. Oftentimes, oh. it's the business that owns the foundation, right? Ah, okay, sir. So it's, yeah. it can be from an NGO before the business itself. Uh, yeah, so there's, a, there's an NGO which started the whole thing in 1970s, as I said, and then we started a business to support that product. That is very interesting, actually. Normally, talaga, uh, normally sir, it happens that the business starts first, right? Then yes. they put up their organizations. Yes, they put up their foundation, and the foundation yep. that the program, ours is quite different. So the business model is um the business supports the program it's the other way around we don't use the the program or the foundation to further the marketing work of the business right because oftentimes yes, you will see corporations with their foundations you know, have their programs or their projects and then you will see yes, a big big name of their company there uh, so it's actually promoting also the company ours is uh, the other way around that's quite interesting, Nasser. Uh, hopefully, there are more organizations that can do such. Uh, that would be interesting and helpful for our 
country actually. The, so, there, there are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, if I may just add, uh, there are actually five certified organizations of the Welfare Trade Organization in the country right now. Um, there's one in Bicol, the Barcelona Multipurpose Cooperative, which is also a partner of CCAP. There is the SAFI in Santa Ana, Manila, a member of the association. There is one in Cagayan de Oro, Salai Handmade had handicrafts, they make paper uh, out of fiber. You know? And Panay Fair Trade, um, they have Muscovado sugar. So, konti pa lang kami, pero we really want to have more fair trade advocates uh, in the future. Hopefully, sir, there will be more fair trade advocates in the future. Uh, it would help the future businesses. Uh, and like I said, the country itself, can then, sir, it's going to be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I have some questions for you, sir, from uh, us. Uh, you mentioned earlier, sir, that there are trade, uh, fair trade labels. Mm -hmm. existing. So mm -hmm. are those labels reliable? And do they guarantee that, um, that the production chain from like the production of the, from the fields to the shops, mm -hmm. is it all fair? Mm -hmm. Or is there something that needs to be improved? Okay, good question, uh, Dominique. Uh, the labels are very, very reliable. You know why? Because these certifications are done third party. Like for example, CCAP, we are a fair trade organization, guaranteed fair trade organization by the World Fair Trade of, uh, Organization. No? And we are audited every two years by a third party auditor, oftentimes from abroad. No? Uh, they're sent here to the Philippines to visit us and visit our partners to validate whether or not we are uh, following the criteria of fair trade. So there's a checklist. They will be giving you naman the checklist. And the checklist would have weight, weighted average, uh, weighted um, uh, scores. No? Of course, because not every everything under one uh, principle would have the same weight, right? Uh, there are specific activities there that they're looking for, and one would have a stronger weight, the other would have lesser weight. No? So, and you have to pass that. And it's also quite uh, uh, difficult because you, they're not just interviewing you, they're also interviewing everyone that is part of your value chain. So oftentimes they would be here about two to three weeks. They would be visiting many of our communities and they would be checking the value chain no? from sourcing to production to delivery to our payments to them, to their payments to their workers. No? And at the end of the, of the audit, they would um, prepare a recommendation to World Fair Trade o Organization uh, whether or not you will be certified under probation or... Uh, decertified no? um, so it's it's quite difficult it's quite uh, rigorous in a sense no? in in attaining that label um, this is much more uh, stringent when you talk about food because as I said the WFTO is mostly handicrafts and furniture textiles no? um, when it comes to food it's much more stringent because you not only speak of the value chain, but also the handling, the safety and security of the food, its nutritional value, and its um, source, no? Because we um, artificial or synthetic fertilizers will not be allowed. Pesticides will not be allowed. You know, many instances, that's where we have difficulty, in fact, in the Philippines. All I know is we only have a fair trade coconut water that is certified and sugar, Muscovado sugar. As far as I know, I think I, I, if I don't know if I'm wrong, perhaps there, there are new pro, uh, food products that are fair trade certified. But as far as I know, we only have fair trade coconut water and fair trade um, Muscovado sugar in Panay. The coconut water, I think, is in Quezon Aurora area. So they are exported uh, abroad. No? And the beauty of fair trade is that because it is a premium, 
many of the farmers in those areas, Aurora, Quezon, realize that they're actually selling it before at a losing rate. No? Um, and that is why they will always be farmers. They will always remain farmers. You can never see them better themselves because you know they are not paid properly. They're not paid well. That's why I I remember when one senator, uh, lady senator, said that some of the farmers really don't know how to do business. That's also quite true. Um, they remain farmers. They do not become agri entrepreneurs when, in fact, they should be agri entrepreneurs. They are the source of food. They are the source of agricultural products. Yes, but no, our system in the country allows them to remain just farmers or not allows uh, forces them to remain just farmers that's the challenge um and that's why go negotio was a very good tool in making people realize be to become business people i only fear that times the the object the objective is money the objective is profit, which is not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. No? It's it's an important objective. Profit, money, riches. It's just that you cannot sustain that if surrounding you is poverty. Sooner or later, those people will rob you. Sooner or later, those people will, you know, uh, leave you because they want to go and look for greener pastures. That cannot be sustainable. And I think we've seen that again and again and again. Yes, yeah, sir. It's all over so, the news. Yeah. So, so going back to your question, I digress. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the labels are very, very, very reliable. They go through a stringent process of certification. So if you go to like supermarkets, I know some of the products there uh, have the label uh, please buy please um, pay be, be, uh, have patronage of these products if if you need uh, handicraft materials baskets or whatnot please ask because you will know that when you buy them you buy them helping other artisans become better in their lives kasi hindi namin binabarat yung mga artisans namin we don't yes. buy them at a losing losing amount no, for them. So uh, yes, sir. So the pro the process is really really difficult. What you from what you've mentioned. Now that I think about it, like I was thinking uh, that maybe in the future, if I have a if I have a business my own, I would do this fair trade. Uh, I would make my business probably have the fair trade logo itself but knowing that i might have to like um take more time on deciding on what to do or for other people as well maybe you sh you can give out more stuff for your employees or maybe make a way to make 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 a development plan for your business mm. aim this logo right sir so another yeah, question well, for that, 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 as I if, if I may just add, uh, Dominic, if you if you may, um, Go, sir. that's the beauty of fair trade because you cannot. It it's just not like oh, I want to be fair trade, but I don't know how to do it. No, uh, fair trade, WFTO, for example, will help you do it. There's a support system in fair trade. In the in the in the commercial, uh, well, you have to you have to attend seminars and whatnot, right? Of course, there's go negotio right now, which is very good. It's a very good vehicle uh, for you to learn how to do business. But in fair trade, it's also the same. If you want to be certified, you can actually ask help, and they will provide you the support. They can provide you a body, quote unquote, body system. For example, in the Philippines, sometimes they refer to us to help them uh, explore fair trade certification. You know, so yeah, it, the only thing is. You want to be fair trade. That's the that's the the first requirement that you want to be fair in your business. Okay, sir. So, in the future, if ever ha if ever I have a business, I'll go to you, na lang, sir. For <laughs> sure, 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 sure. 
So, yes, sir, I have another question here. Um, since we're talking about sustainability options, mm. other than fair trade, um, what do you think are other possible sustainability options there are? Good question. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak of it from the perspective of climate and environment. As, as you know, I am an environmentalist. I am a climate action advocate. One important sustainability option is, um, well, they say greening the value chain, no? greening the supply chain. So that's important. Um, many companies are doing it right now. They're trying to green their, their supply system, their supply chain, their value chain. Um, but you can only go so much, right? Because along the line, you will still need plastic. You will still need, you know, materials that are synthetic. Um, so, th so that's one, greening the supply chain and value chain. Um, as far as the source is concerned, it is important that we also look at the possibility of a sustainable agri agriculture framework, no? Um, or SUSAG, no? that's, that's what you call SUSAG, the Sustainable Agriculture. Um, it's a series, it's a system also of doing agriculture sustainably. It's very important that, that, that we also do that because um, our land, uh, our soil is dying because of a chemical. And sooner or later, it's less more productive than what we used to have before. And we have a growing population, no? and that's that's gonna be a big, big uh, challenge later on. So sustainable agriculture is one. The other one is um, uh, organic farming, of course. No? Uh, that's that's a very important perspective in terms of uh, important system no? uh, or option in sustainability. Because in organic farming, we ensure that we follow the the system of nature. Uh, and when we follow that, it is almost always sure that it is sustainable. The only reason it's not yet as sustainable as you want it to be is because not many consumers um, buy it, at least in the country. No? But in, in the U.S. and in many other countries, it's already very sustainable because people already buy it for health reasons and for the environment and so on and so forth. No? The other option that I can think of um, that is um, sustainability at its at its um, basic at its most basic is what you call the DRR CCA framework, disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation framework. No? Uh, it is sustainable. It it is sustainability option because it allows businesses, communities, organizations, even governments to develop a framework of resilience. Now, I know many people are tired of hearing this, the, the word resilience no? after iPhones, Rolly and Ulysses. But that is the wrong meaning of resilience that they're talking about. Resilience is not about getting up. It's not just about getting up. Resilience from the perspective of DRRCCA is the ability to prepare any hazards that will come our way. The resilience that we understand or that is popularly understood is resilience at the time of the disaster, meaning the rescue, the rehabilitation, that's not resilience. Well, it's part of resilience, but that's not what it's supposed to be. Resilience will point to preparedness. No? Are we prepared to the shocks? And preparedness is not about having a a rescue boat. Preparedness is not about having a, uh, a team of volunteers to do rescue. No. Preparedness is systemic change, transformation of systems to prepare for the shocks that come with the hazards. And that is a very important sustainability option, Dominique. Many people do not understand that. Many people or organizations do not also um, look at it that way. Yes. Some businesses already do that, but they call it contingency planning. The problem with contingency planning is it only occurs when a contingency occurs. They operate, they switch the light on when the contingency occurs. But if the contingency is more than what you prepared for, 
then the contingency plan will fall. So that's why DRRCCS sustainability option is also very important because it creates the necessary framework no, to prepare for the shocks caused by the hazards. So, yes, sir. So you've given us four other options. So I'll take that in mind. Hopefully the rest who are still watching, uh, take that in mind as well. Um, one more question, sir. Actually, it's more of like, it's not really a question. It's more of like asking advice. Um, sure. So for the youth, um, mm. since this is catered for the youth, um, what can uh, we, the youth, help do to help um, promote sustainability and fair trade? Well, um, one, you can be fair trade consumers. So that's one. You, you, we like to buy coffee. We like to buy um, many other stuff. No? I know there's not much fair trade products yet in the market here in the Philippines. But if you can find those logos, those labels, and you, if you like coffee, please buy those because you are assured that you are supporting a community properly there. Second, um, join um, groups or participate in groups such as CCAP. You can be volunteers, you could be resellers. You know, we, we, we also have resellers of our products. You know? um, in that way, you could have your own little business on the side while you're still studying, and then you are able also to support communities. And then ultimately, um, you have the future you know, uh, ahead of you. And you can make anything you want. Uh, you are in a generation that possibilities are almost endless. What with technology, what with opportunities for training like this, SME, that PH. Um, you have everything at, in your, um, at your fingertips, so to speak. Yes, sir. And if you want to, to develop a business, to, to become business people, that is good. Uh, go ahead. We need more business people in this country to develop our economy. Um, I, I, would, I would turn political when I say I would really hope that we have less OFWs and more SMEs. No? Um, and if you do decide to, to, to do business, I hope you, those of you that are watching, I hope you take to heart. No, no. Um, for your business to be sustainable, it has to be part of a greater uh, community that is hoping to develop. Also, I'm sorry. Um, it cannot, you cannot be alone. You cannot be an island in developing your business. Develop it with your people treating them properly, paying them fairly, develop it with your suppliers by giving them the opportunity to develop also themselves. More importantly, develop it with nature. Um, have businesses that do not anymore destroy nature. Um, otherwise, unless, of course, you like the constant environmental problems that we have, like uh, flooding because of uh, denuded forests or pandemics because of uh, wildlife exploitation, so on and so forth. No, so have have businesses or develop businesses that somehow integrate uh, ecolo ecological protection or, at the very least, ecological integrity, uh, because that is what you will need later on as you grow older. Well, we're almost the same age i'm 41 i'm just five years older than than the <laughs> the oldest in your group perhaps and i'm also in that front where i have a seven-year-old kid who will later on get this earth you know, this philippines that we have and if we're not doing it right this moment then i don't expect that he will do it right when he is already an adult because it might be too late for him. So 
So, so that's, you know, that's something to think about, um, especially you who are still at the cusp of uh, becoming somebody in the future. So, yes, sir. Thank you for that wonderful advice. I'll take that into heart as hopefully the people who are, who watches this also takes that into heart and put, uh, integrate that into our uh, businesses or whatever um, work that we do. Yeah. So for everyone who attended this webinar, all of you can get a digital certificate of your attendance. For sure, you want to get yours. So if you do want to get to get a certificate, just head on to our website at www.sme.philippines. The PH, sorry. Or click the link that we posted in the comments section below. So once again, thank you, Sir Voltaire. Um, if you have anything to promote, uh, please do it now. Yes, please uh, visit our Instagram account at Likang Atin. That's at Likang Atin. You will see there our products for the domestic market. Or you can also visit our social media pages and facebook just look for ccap or ccapft um, for any activities that you might want to join in or any volunteer um, needs that our organization would have yeah and um, hopefully we can have you with us in our quest to have a fair decent and just trading partnership Okay, so thank you, Sir Voltaire, and it was wonderful meeting you and having you with us this morning. Thank you also for inviting me, and, and uh, I hope this will not be the last time. <laughs> Hopefully, sir, we can meet another time. <laughs> yes. So, so before the webinar comes to a close, I would like to invite everyone who wants to learn more and increase their knowledge and skills and just visit our website at www.sme.com. Ph. That's www.sme.ph. We offer a wide range of masterclass courses, those of which you can enroll in based on whatever is relevant for to your career, passion, and interests. So once again, I am Dominic Tanchico, signing out. See you again next time.